the Council must be prepared to impose additional and stronger sanctions on North Korean nuclear and ballistic missile programs. This is a real threat to the world, whether we want to talk about it or not. North Korea is a big world problem. Otherwise, it could easily be China strongly opposes any actions against the UN Security Council resolutions on the DPRK and he called for all parties to exercise restraint and avoid escalating tensions. And the Chinese president said a resolution can only be reached when all parties share responsibility and work towards the same direction. And he also added that China is willing to join concerned parties, including the U.S., working to achieve the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. And the two leaders also agree to maintain close communication over core issues. And Trump said he's looking forward to visiting China. The comments were made in a statement released by the country's foreign ministry. It also claims Washington's strategy towards the DPRK over the last half century is the motivation behind Pyongyang's nuclear program. The statement comes after Trump told ambassadors of UN Security Council members that the status quo in the DPRK is unacceptable and the Council must be prepared to impose tougher sanctions. In an unusual move, U.S. President Donald Trump hosted ambassadors from the United Nations Security Council at the White House Monday to discuss tensions on the Korean Peninsula. This is a real threat to the world, whether we want to talk about it or not. North Korea is a big world problem, and it's a problem we have to finally solve. You know, people have put blindfolds on for decades, and now it's time to solve the problem. Trump is threatening more sanctions, and the U.S. has refused to take military action off the table as it moves a nuclear-powered submarine and the USS Carl Vinson aircraft carrier group toward the Korean Peninsula. A commentary published in an official DPRK newspaper warns the United States should not run amok and should consider carefully any catastrophic consequence from its foolish military provocative act. Adding to the tension, the DPRK detained a U.S. citizen over the weekend as he tried to leave the country. The man worked as a teacher at a university in the DPRK. It's not clear why he is being held. China is calling for a calm, measured approach. The current situation on the Korean Peninsula is complex, sensitive and highly intense. We urge all parties concerned to keep calm and restrain and refrain from taking actions that may result in escalation of tensions. That message was delivered directly by Chinese President Xi Jinping in a phone call with Trump early Monday, with Xi also advising Trump that both sides must be prepared to compromise. The two leaders pledged to work closely on the issue. I wanted to do something different. It's different for sure. This is how Ramona Austin and a few of her friends decided to display their support of then-candidate Donald Trump, building an actual Trump train. For her, it was all about his promise to put America first. Everybody discouraged me from doing it. But even this wasn't enough, so she painted this. But it's clear many still don't have the same trust in Trump, as evidenced by the graffiti, a kind of warning that was sprayed on her wall. When it comes to foreign policy, what President Donald Trump does has a unique impact on Austin and others here, because this is the Norfolk, Virginia area, home to the world's largest military community. Almost 100 days in, it's not clear what Trump's overall defense strategy is. He had said the U.S. should stay out of Syria, but once in office, he launched cruise missiles, bombing a Syrian airfield in response to a chemical attack, launched a raid in Yemen that killed a Navy SEAL and more than a dozen civilians, expanded U.S. military operations in Somalia, and then he said he sent in an aircraft carrier strike group to the waters off North Korea as a warning over its missile tests. Only problem was, the ships weren't actually on the way when he said it. In Afghanistan, the U.S. dropped what is called the mother of all bombs, the most powerful non-nuclear weapon in its arsenal on an ISIL tunnel system. President Trump made one thing clear. His top priority for the U.S. military is the defeat of the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. We are doing a job with respect to ISIS that it has not been done anywhere near the numbers that we're producing right now. Admiral William Fallon was once in charge of the fight in that area. He says he hasn't seen much difference under President Trump. 
They're basically continuing what was already in, in progress with a few adjustments. They've uh, put, uh, uh, directed a few more troops to go into Syria. As for Austin, whose family has been deeply impacted by the decisions past presidents have made. That's my, one of my grandfathers who was, um, survived the Bataan Death March. And that's my other grandfather who was in Berlin during World War II. He was also in World War I. And that's my father who went to Vietnam twice. Even though he has expanded the areas of conflict for the U.S. military, she still thinks President Trump is honoring his commitment to focus on America first. The press is, is talking about it as if, as if he flipped, but, you know, in my opinion, you have to remember he's a businessman. He was sort of on the other side um, when, when he was in the, in the um, civilian world. And once you become president and you're privy to more details, more information, I think that, that changes your mind on some things. Almost 100 days into his term, she is definitely still on board with her new president. Patty Colhane, Al Jazeera, Norfolk, Virginia. The 15 members of the UN Security Council on their way to meet the new U.S. president for the first time on Monday. And while there's been considerable concern about Donald Trump's desire to cut U.S. funding for the U.N., he welcomed the ambassadors to the West Wing to share lunch and their ideas for stopping North Korea's nuclear ambitions. The Council must be prepared to impose additional and stronger sanctions on North Korean nuclear and ballistic missile programs. This is a real threat to the world, whether we want to talk about it or not. North Korea is a big world problem, and it's a problem we have to finally solve. Trump's outreach to an organization he long criticized on the campaign trail as ineffective is notable. Pyongyang has long ignored calls to stop developing its nuclear weapons program, but in recent weeks, it has become particularly brazen in its defiance. North Korea will react to a total war with an all-out war, nuclear war with nuclear strikes of its own style, and surely will win a victory in the death-defined struggle against U.S. imperialists. Even as a U.S. aircraft carrier strike group heads for the Korean Peninsula, U.S. officials have tried to find the right amount of tough talk. If there's a catastrophic mistake, it's going to be because he's just continuing to try and instigate an issue. We're going to continue to be stable. We're going to continue to have the international community stable. It's the reason why none of us are even trying to pick a fight with him, um, but we'll have to wait and see. With the negotiations known as the six-party talks essentially dead, Washington needs new allies and ideas. And so, a series of National Security Council briefings for the UN ambassadors with the threat from Pyongyang at the top. On Friday, the U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson will chair a special session of the UN Security Council on North Korea. The council isn't expected to take any special action after this meeting, but as these longtime diplomats know, Pyongyang could force them into an emergency session at any moment. The question is, would their response be as tough as what the U.S. President Donald Trump wants? Rosalind Jordan, Al Jazeera, the White House. This is the U.S. aircraft carrier North Korea says it's ready to sink in a single strike. The Carl Vinson strike group is heading towards the Korean Peninsula. Two Japanese destroyers have joined the U.S. naval exercise, with the Japanese Prime Minister's support underlined in a phone call to the U.S. President. We completely agree to strongly demand that North Korea, who is very repeatedly dangerous and provocative, must show restraint. South Korea has also indicated it will be joining the naval drills. But North Korea's only major ally, China, called for restraint from all parties when Chinese President Xi Jinping spoke to Trump on Monday. Pyongyang, though, has warned that North Korean forces are combat ready. North Korea has access to a powerful nuclear deterrent to protect itself from the U.S. nuclear threat. North Korea will react to a total war with an all-out war, a nuclear war with nuclear strikes of its own style, and surely will win a victory in the death-defying struggle against the U.S. imperialists. A hint of what that could be was displayed on April 15th at a military parade to mark the 105th birthday of North Korea's founding father, Kim Il-sung. The hardware included what some are calling new intercontinental ballistic missiles.
The actions of its neighbors are now overriding domestic issues in South Korea's upcoming presidential election. There's concern that what the people of South Korea want may not align with its allies. South Korea has had nine years of conservative government which supported multinational efforts of pressure and sanctions against North Korea. But the front runner in the May 9 elections is a liberal candidate. And if he wins, the new administration could favor a different approach to North Korea with focus on more engagement. North Korea featured heavily in the latest presidential debate on Sunday with favorite Moon Jae-in defending his preference of diplomacy with Pyongyang. But there's concern the situation could get worse in the coming days. The U.S. fleet led by Carl Vinson is expected to reach the Korean peninsula within days. And on Tuesday, Pyongyang celebrates the 85th anniversary of the Korean People's Army. North Korea has been known to mark key events by conducting a nuclear test or a missile launch. And the council must be prepared to impose additional and stronger sanctions on North Korean nuclear and ballistic missile program. This is a real threat. Trump made the remarks during a meeting with the uh, UNSC ambassadors at the White House. He said that North Korea is a big world problem which needs to be solved. North Korea has been under a raft of UN sanctions over its missile and nuclear programs. Pyongyang, however, says that it will not quit its activities unless Washington ends its hostile policy toward the East Asian country. Geopolitical analyst Ryan Dawson joins us now from Osaka. Mr. Dawson, what do you think when you hear the recent comments uh, coming from Donald Trump with regards to more sanctions on North Korea? Well, sanctions just do a couple things. They, one, they don't work in, as a deterrent for their missile program. That's been evident over the last couple decades. But it does act as collective punishment on the people of North Korea. And it also creates lucrative black markets. And that's how North Korea has been able to skirt these sanctions, combining with sanctions and black markets from other places. Uh, last year, North Korea sent uh, armaments to Egypt because of the sanctions that the U.S. put on Egypt under the flag of Cambodia. They just put a different flag on the ship and sold plenty of uh, weapons and got plenty of money. So the sanctions are not effective. They are effective at starving people. That's about all they do. But it's really telling that the U.S. wants to talk about such a thing while they have their nuclear-powered aircraft carrier in Korean waters. It just docked in South Korea. They know the anniversary of, of the 85th anniversary of North Korea's founding of their military is today, and they decide to do what? Send a nuclear aircraft carrier there because that's not going to agitate anything. How can they possibly try to have diplomacy when they are purposely agitating North Korea at the same time? That shows you what their real goals actually are. So basically, they don't want uh, North Korea to fold. They want to agitate it so uh, the United States and its uh, regional allies could probably seize the initiative. Well, that and they also get to sell a lot of armaments and they get to expand their bases, which are very unpopular in Japan and not so popular in South Korea either. It's a, it's a nice sales pitch. The more they can agitate North Korea, the more the other Asian states are dependent on U.S. military. Uh, for its expansion and in the naval business you're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars so they have a lot of reasons to agitate North Korea and it's safely from the distance of the United States because were a war to break out it's going to be South Korea that suffers the most from that South and North Korea of course but the US isn't concerned about humanitarian needs it's talking about what North Korea may do when you have states like Saudi Arabia that are actively at war with Yemen. That's a complete humanitarian crisis. People starving to death, having their ports destroyed, airports destroyed. And they don't even mention it in the U.S. media that such a conflict is even occurring. 